All right. Welcome, everybody, to Wednesday night soul teaching. I am so excited to have you guys all here. As I prepared for this evening's teaching and talk, I found myself really reflecting back on all of the weeks that we've been meeting already and all of the talks that we've already had. And in that reflection, I am just blown away by how much stuff we've covered, how much ground we have covered. And not only that, but how much transformation and shift all of you have been able to experience and feel thus far on the journey. I think it is incredible. So after I sat and I reviewed everything that we've covered thus far, the word that kept coming through for tonight at the start with tonight is inventory. We need to take inventory. And it was funny because as I was preparing for this call, I was making myself dinner. I was doing the normalcy of my life. And I found myself like singing out, so, so, uh, out loud a song about we need to take inventory. I was just making a song. And so tonight, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take inventory, but we're going to take inventory on where we're at in a really cool, impactful way so that by the time we're done with this talk, I hope it has brought a lot of inspiration forward for you guys and um, really opened some pockets of thought and inspirations and ideation and intuition so that we can start actually creating um, a little bit more tangible, this new paradigm. So all along in our family, you've heard me say we're in this new paradigm, we're in this new paradigm. And like I said, reflecting back, we've been setting the stage. So now it's time to start really talking about taking action in that, in that paradigm going forward, okay? So before I go into the formal teaching, I have to say that tonight's um, a basis of what I'm going to be talking about is from this book. And hopefully that's coming through. It's not backwards for you guys. Um, but the name of the book, just in case it is coming through backwards, is called The Go-Giver. So this is by Bob Berg and John David Mann. So I was telling my husband... Oops, my husband about this the other day, and I said, it's for anybody familiar with the book, The Five People You Meet in Heaven, it's The Five People You Meet in Heaven is a really quick little read. It's really impactful. That's how this book is. It's super, super short, and it's um, just really, really great. So if you're looking for a great book, I highly recommend this, and this is a basis of a lot of what we're going to be talking to. So like you know me, I say that there's no such thing as just coincidence. Um, this book fell in my lap. Uh, what yesterday I've read it already like I said it's a really quick read and I was like wow so last week if you guys remember in one of our conversations we were talking about we've been talking a lot about abundance and we've been talking a lot about the energy of giving and the energy of receiving so if you remember what I said last week I was saying that giving and receiving are not two separate actions. They're actually one of the same. So every time that we give, another person automatically receives. And every time we receive, we're automatically giving somebody else the joy of that receiving. So it's a really important natural flow that we're going to be diving in here tonight. Okay, so this is what we're going to take inventory of. And this came out of the book and it really hit me and I'm going to share it. I'm going to have you like timeline it for those of you who have a notebook in front of you. But there are three levels, if you will, of success in our world and in our lives. The first level is survival. Okay, so this is where the vast majority of everybody lands. They land in the survival bucket. So what that means is that you have your basic living needs met. You're surviving, you're getting by, your needs are met. The second one in here is save. And save is even less people than survival. And the saves are you have your basic needs met, but you also have an excess in your life. So you have some savings in your life. And the third category that really seems too far between and not enough people are falling into the bucket of is service. So that's the theme of tonight's teaching is inspired service. And what happens when we step into the energy of inspired service and how living in that energy opens our ability to not only give, 
but to also receive in return. So for example, like the, my work that I put out for all of you guys is my inspired service and gift to the world. I love what I do. It never feels like work. I'm always excited about it. And what you see on this camera or what you have seen in my office before, what you see in private sessions is what you get. This is authentically me. So putting inspired service in the world is really um, impactful in all of these ways. So with all of my soul family here, my mission is to help you, most of you in survival, get maybe into the savings, but really ultimately get you into the bucket of service. So now if you're like me, when I was reading this the other day and really now reflecting on it today, what I did, I'm gonna show this here too, if my pages will turn. But what I did is I drew this like little makeshift timeline. Okay, oops, see that? So I just put me, you see that little person of me? Ooh, it's too washed out, hold on. Hard to figure out how to hold this okay but you get the gist hopefully you have a timeline that starts with survive in the middle is save and at the end is serve and i want you to put if you have a piece of paper in front of you to put that on your piece of paper those three categories those three um buckets if you will survive save and serve and then if you were to graph yourself on there if you were to put yourself on there where are you so really, literally put yourself on it. I know mine's not coming through, um, but I see I put myself over here. And then I was like, hey, I say, I survive, I save, I serve. I put like a little hop, skip, and a jump. You guys can't see my paper, so I'm not gonna hold it up anymore. But I want you, before we continue forward, to take that little inventory of where you're at, okay? So our whole mission in life as people, as human beings on planet Earth, our whole mission in life is inspired service, is to find our gift, acknowledge our passion, and put that into action so that we may serve. And it's in doing so that we also simultaneously receive. So the promise of this book is it's called the go-giver, but most of us are familiar with the term the go-getter. So you go out there and you work really hard. You're like a racehorse. You, you go, 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 go. And you're always looking either for more or looking for enough. And no matter how much you get out there and no matter how much you go, those reservoirs seem to never be really ultimately taking off. So maybe that's a career Maybe that's in a role as a wife or a mother, um, you know, in school, whatever your circumstance is. But we tend as a people to be go getters. I lived a huge portion of that of my life that way. Um, for those of you guys who know me, when I talk about my story, I'm always like, I'm a racehorse, right? Like I would just go, I want something, I'm gonna go get it. And I would chase and chase and chase and chase and chase. Um, and in my adult life, I was always wondering why things weren't coming to fruition, right? And it was that go-getter. So what I realized needs to happen is this, what the book is calling go-giver, but I call inspired service. So it's important first and foremost to note that there is a difference between your gift and your passion. Both of those things are going to lead you to a life of inspired service, but you have to identify what those things are. So I'm gonna give you a little exercise to do that, which I think is very powerful. Your gift is the thing that throughout your entire life, or maybe in all of your adult life, people seek you out for. What are you known for? What do people seek you out for? So for example, my gift, what my entire life people have sought me out for since I was little to an adult is I'm somebody that listens and I can give sound advice. So people always seek me out as a listener, okay? So I know my gift in this world is to listen, to validate, and not to judge. Those are things that I do in my nature, okay? So I want you to take a minute and think about what is your innate gift, okay? So what is it that people seek you out for? What is it something that you can do or you do do so effortlessly that it doesn't take any energy, it really doesn't take any money, it doesn't take any mental resources, it's just something that you innately do. 
If you have a pen and paper in front of you, I want you to jot that down. If you don't know, that is okay, but I want you to think about that question because I guarantee you, even if it's not coming to your mind right away, there is something there that people, your innate gift that people seek you out for, okay? So in our lives, we have our gift, and our gift is given to us as a means to start our journey, to start our path of inspired service. So by utilizing our gift, putting that gift out into the world in a, some way, shape or form, in a creative way, a business way, or a service to other type of way, what happens is, is that gift starts to welcome in and allows us to begin to receive abundance. So that can be abundance of time, abundance of resources, such as financial abundance. That can be abundance of joy. It could be time with family, whatever that is. Our gift starts serving the, um, our abundance to come in and support us. Okay, and this is where it's important because this is where passion is going to come in. Your passion is the big, grandiose, like when uh, week one of Manifesting Magic, when I say wave your wand, if you can wave your wand and have any reality, what would it be, right? That big, grand passion is that vision is your passion, okay? And so you have to identify those separately to start getting into inspired service. Okay, so again, my example, my gift is I'm a listener, I'm a non-judger, and I'm a validator. Those are things I can do without thinking, and it's my gift to the world. My passion has always been writing, teaching, and the big vision is being the next Wayne Dyer, right? So traveling the world, teaching all of this stuff that I'm teaching, writing books, and so on and so forth. If I know those, but if I'm living my life constantly trying to go and get my passion, trying to always do this without utilizing my gift, I'm gonna end up in a roadblock. I'm gonna end up hitting a wall. I'm, I'm gonna end up, and I've tried it before, so this is why I know it intimately, is that when you just chase the passion, what you're always going to find is this illusion of lack. Either there's like not enough money to support you in your passion. So you're like, God, I wish I could do this, but I would never be able to support my family. Or there's not enough time for the passion, or it just doesn't come to fruition. And we constantly spin our wheels trying to make it reality. So with that being said, there's nothing wrong with the passion or the dream, but it's the starting point of where we're getting from, okay? So if you look at that timeline again, survive, save, serve, okay? So under survive, you can put gift, identifying your gift. Your gift and finding ways to utilize your gift, which right now in life you very well could be, is how you're going to find a way to survive. If you take your gift and you utilize it in your career or in your business as an entrepreneur or starting a side hustle or a business, it's going to move you into safe. Okay? So your survive and save are funded by your gift, funded by time, finances, energy, mental space, right? All of those things our abundance and survive and in safe. And when you utilize your gift, when you recognize it and you utilize your gift, what's going to happen is, is it's going to catapult you into serving. And I guarantee you, if you look at your passion, that's going to be your serving bucket. Okay. So hopefully you're all following me with this, this pattern here, because it's a really important one to know, because we all want to get to the serve. We all want to live a life of inspired service, because when you are in genuinely giving and receiving one motion, when you are genuinely first and foremost focused always on service and inspiration to others in the greater world around you, I promise you everything that you seek now will follow you. And I know a lot of you have worked with me individually in the past, and you've heard me say that lesson to you. When you trust and you follow the dream, when you follow the vision, when you follow the passion, all of the things you're worried about or all of the things you seek come to fruition. 
So if you're like, how am I going to pay it? How am I going to have life insurance? How am I going to balance my time? How am I going to explain it to my spouse and get them to be on board? How am I going to like put this out into the cosmos and not be judged, right? When you take that step, when you follow the hop down this little timeline here, all of those things will be taken care of. And you will be so universally supported. You will be like mind blown and you will be in there and you'll be like, oh my gosh, Jamie, I get it now, right? That light came on. But I'm telling you, you can't hop down the timeline. You can't live a life of inspired service if you don't first acknowledge and recognize what your gift is. So this is how I'm gonna tie this in. Like I said at the beginning, We've been talking a lot about being in a new paradigm, how to energetically and vibrationally create and enter this new paradigm. And you've heard me say a couple times, but it's worth saying again, that the biggest, most incredible, amazing, magical gift of this transitional upheaval in our world right now is that in this new paradigm, we can create and be whatever we want to be. So we had the gift of our world being rattled to help like manually or physically tear down some of these infrastructures that have been holding us tethered in place for so very long. And now that we are entering, now that everybody's home, everybody in, in some way, shape, or form has had to reflect on priorities, what's important, what matters, what makes me happy. And if you strip away all the superficial external stuff, am I okay here, right? We've all in some way, shape, or form been going through this. So now when we pause and we take inventory, of ourselves and what our gifts are, what our innate gifts are, and utilize and build a plan, so to speak, to utilize and execute on that gift, we are going to catapult, leap into a life of inspired service. Okay? Think about the last time you genuinely gave to another. So maybe it was a gift on Christmas or their birthday or a surprise out of the blue drop-off package on somebody's porch while in quarantine or whatever. Think about the last time you genuinely gave to somebody else. Think about the feeling. Maybe you can get that feeling in your bones of like tingling goodness in your bones. Maybe when you recall that moment last time you gave, maybe it, somebody opened a gift you gave them in your presence, or you surprised somebody and you were able to witness their facial expression or their body language or their movement. Like, think about that. Giving to another lights us up so deeply within. And now take a second and think about the last time somebody gave something to you. So again, maybe it was something totally out of the blue. Maybe it was a birthday present that you opened or a Christmas present you opened where you're like, oh my gosh, this person like so knows me. Or maybe it's just the last time somebody did something for you without being asked. The last time somebody gifted something to you, like genuinely gifted something to you. Think about that moment and like how you felt. And maybe you can feel how you felt in that moment. Maybe you can feel that vibration again of like, Wow, like thoughtfulness and incredibleness. Now, if you look at both of those energies, the give and the receive, how similar was your response? It creates an energy of abundance. So when we have been talking so much about abundance and letting go of lack, Abundance, just like everything else, is a vibrational attraction point. It's a vibrational sensation. So when you experience abundance, which is the form of giving or receiving, because you're constantly giving or receiving, whether you realize it or not, that energy is the vibration of abundance, the vibration of who you are. And what's cool about talking about this, besides all the other things I said, what's really cool 
is once you realize that and bring that to the light, you can execute that flow for inspired service of all and be in that state of abundance all the time. Yeah, will there be vibrational ripples of other energetic frequencies or emotions? Yeah. But you will always be like your um, ground zero, your foundational place is always the vibration of abundance. And isn't that cool? I think that's cool. So start thinking about that, okay? What are your innate gifts? The things that you do without even thinking about it that don't take a ton of time, brain power, or energy on your part. Things that people seek you out for. What are those things? And how are you using your gifts right now, your unique, divinely given gifts to survive and or hopefully save? And how can you use that gift to catapult you into inspired service and into your passion? Again, that's why the book is called The Go-Giver. We're used to go-getting. What can you give? How can you give? How can you utilize your gift to step into that zone of inspired service and abundance? So now is the time. The doors like blasted open. And at first we're like, oh my God, they blasted open. And there's this thing there called COVID, right? But now we're sitting with that COVID a little bit, this, this energy. We're like, oh, wow. You didn't bust in here to rob me and strip me of everything that I had. You busted in here to say, wake up. Like there's so much more depth to our reality right now than we often give it credit for. So this is a beautiful time to start thinking about your gifts and thinking about your passions and thinking about that life of inspired service. And happiness is the core of abundance, at least in my book. It's how much joy you're getting out of something. So thinking about your life, think about your day-to-day -day life and everything it entails. How much joy are you getting out of that existence right now? Like joy. And think about when you think about your gift or using or executing your gift, how much joy do you get out of that? How much joy do you get out of giving, which means you're instantaneously receiving? That's our abundance sweet spot, okay? So when we were talking about our ability to adapt rapidly, right now having this conversation where I'm like, you can be whatever you wanna be. You might be like, oh my God, this chick is nuts. <laughs> I can't be whatever I wanted to be. I always wanted to be a ballerina or I always wanted to be an artist or I always wanted to be a world traveler and live out of my backpack or whatever the case might be, right? And you say, that's not possible. And I'm sitting here and telling you right now, yes, it is. You have to allow yourself to get out of your own way, blocking the flow of the give or the receive. And when you commit to unblocking that, that's where that adapting starts happening, right? And you say, hey, my gift is this. I'm going to like, utilize my gift like a boss to survive, to build up my savings, and to move me into my passion, okay? So like I said at the beginning, most people live their life saying, what's my passion and how do I chase it? And some people are lucky and fortunate enough to identify their passion and then spend their life chasing it. And it never comes to fruition and they wonder why, right? Think about people in your world. So like in my world, those were like the Wayne Dyers of the world and Jack Canfields of the world and Joseph Campbell and C.S. Lewis, these big spiritual teaching authors where way back when I was like, well, no matter what I write, I'm just not getting it, right? Like, why am I not getting attention? Why am I not getting, 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 right? 
And it was because I lost sight of that giving. And when you think of these people that you find to be your role models or mentors, what do they all have in common? They all have a magnetic energy and authenticity to them, right? They all serve you. You trust them because they're genuine, genuine people and individuals. And in that energy of giving and in their energy of freely serving, they become a magnet for everything. They attract everything. That's this flow of abundance, giving and receiving and service. And when you get out of your way, that flow can happen where you can go and live and be the artist and be happier than you've ever experienced in your entire life. You can be whatever you want to be. You can go back to school. You can be a healer. You can be a doctor. And in this new day and age, FYI, not only can you be whatever you want to be, but that's open to like creating new beingness for things that might not have roles right now in our reality. But you got to look at that survive, save, serve, right? I love everything I do because it helps me survive, it helps me save, and it helps me serve. You have to look at that and using your gift to move you into your passion. And passion is inspired service. Okay? That makes sense? And another thing out of the book I want to touch on, because we talked about it last week. Literally, when I was reading this book, I had goosebumps. I'm like, we just talked about this in the soul family last week, that giving and receiving are not two separate things. And one of the examples that they put here in the book that I loved, that I like knew in my brain but never really thought about, was that we as humans, we inhale oxygen and we exhale carbon, right? Inhale and we exhale. And then all the plants on the earth inhale carbon and exhale oxygen. So it's the giving and the receiving and the needing each other. Like we need each other, this balance and the give and the receive where not one is more important than the other. Like the exhale isn't more important than the inhale, right? Like they're equal. So we breathe in oxygen, let out carbon, and plants breathe in the carbon and let out oxygen. So we're in this universal abundance of life all the time without even ha having consciousness around it. And I think that is so incredible when we realize that and we bring consciousness forth and say, I am naturally in that state of abundance all the time. I'm always giving. I'm always giving my energy. I'm always giving my emotions, my mental state, my spirituality. We're always all giving that. We're always giving out our carbon. And then there's always something receiving that and using that. And they use that and they take and then they give. It's this constant flow. That is what abundance is. And it's so magnificent. Okay. So what the book said, this is a little reading thing that I want to share with you because I think it's so super cool. And a lot of what I just shared, I realized wasn't even remotely about the book, but it was inspired by said book. So still get the book. Um, but what they said in there is secret to success, the secret to success, to gaining it, to gaining success to having it is to give, give, give. The secret to getting is serving. And the secret to giving is making yourself open to receiving. Isn't that amazing? I'm gonna read it one more time. The secret to, the secret to success, to gaining it, having it, is to give, give, give. The secret to getting is giving. And the secret to giving is making yourself open to receiving. Isn't that awesome? Like you can't give out love if you're not open to receiving it. Remember, when we give, it's simultaneously receiving. It's an open door.
Okay, it's an open window. So if you are not open to love, passion, purpose, inspired service, whatever you want to insert in there, if you're not open, then you can't give it. And if you can't give, then you're a go-getter. You're chasing and you're spending your time spinning your wheels chasing. So the second we sit here tonight, anytime that we connect and open up to receive, we're instantly open to give, right? The secret to getting is giving. The secret to giving is making yourself open to receiving. It's powerful. So look at your timeline. Where are you? Where are you? Are you in survival? Are you in saving? Or are you in service? Are you in all of them? Where are you? And if we're, you're not in the service bucket, which like I said, and I say this with total love and compassion, not many people are. It's a very select few and think about them. When I think of people in like the service, I think of a lot of businesses I ironically found out about like through like shark tanks and stuff, right? Um, there's like Kind Bar does a ton of stuff. There's a company, Lace and Grace, you know, they open up, they take their profits and they open up orphanages and they started the business to specifically do that. She found out she was great at knitting and sewing and everybody loved her socks. So that was her gift. Everybody sought her out for these socks that she wore and she was, she loved it. It was her gift. She could sew really well. So she started making them, but her purpose, her vision was to be able to serve countries and open up schools in Africa. So she sewed, she served, she saved from her sewing and she took the savings and she moved it into inspired service. And it's a magnetic story. If you don't know the story of Kendra Scott, look at her story. I didn't know her story until this past fall when I went to see her. And I knew she was from Wisconsin and that was about it. Her story is powerful, right? It's just powerful. So when you think about those big impact, high, high connection, high service, big impact givers, are also simultaneously the most wildly successful and happy and peaceful. Even think of the Dalai Lama, right? The Dalai Lama is born into his path, but think about the Dalai Lama. Like think about these magnetic people on earth. What do they all share in common? Inspired service. They're all givers. So all of us here, we all, we've been talking so much about ego and all of the things. And I guarantee you, all of us here in some way, shape or form are blocking the flow of that greatness within ourselves. And again, everything divinely happens for a reason. So it's not like we're intentionally sabotaging. So you can go ahead and get that out of your brain, right? But it's just under utilizing the inner power and gifts that we have. So the blast in the door of our guest COVID is really the invitation to take inventory as well as to say, hands up, I'm moving into this new paradigm. And in the past, it might be hands up, like I'm done, like I'm throwing my hands up, I'm done, I'm complete. Ugh. But in the new paradigm, it's throwing your hands up and dancing. It's I'm going to enter this and I'm going to do this and I am going to commit to using my gifts to survive and to save. Because when I do that, I get one step closer to service, really inspired service. And every single one of you, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, no matter what your shtick is or your story is, has the ability to do the exact same thing. But I promise you, somewhere in this conversation, your mind said, ooh, but I can't do that. Not me. That big inspired service, passionate, happiness, joy, 
it's that's for other people it's not for me and if you had that thought at all during the course of this conversation my my dear dear soul shaker you are not open for receiving because when you are open for receiving you know the true meaning really of me too of that applies to me too i can be anything i want to too because the core of abundance is joy that's the point of life if our energy state is abundance that's our natural state of being all the time then the point of our life is to have joy to experience that so yeah the person the sock girl lace and grace that started her company do you think she didn't have any hiccups do you think she didn't have any struggles or pains or challenges she had a ton and she grew but because the headspace, because the elevated consciousness was executing a gift in the name of service and inspired service in the world, everything orchestrates. And even through the challenge and even through the struggle and even through the pain, it was exciting. And it was one step closer to figuring it all out and to being able to serve the greater good, to have an impact on the world so if your mind told you oh that's not for me i say to back to your mind is that true is joy and abundance only for a select few or do only a select few choose to live in that energy it's a very very different the energy is available to all it's who you are you just have to open to receive it and only a select few believe that they can. So here we are, all of my fruitful ladies that are full of so many gifts. And all of you, I know what your gift is. I can feel it in your energy. And if you've worked with me ever, ever one-on-one, -on -one, or even in our group coaching, you worked with me one-on-one, -on -one, you know I've said it to you too, because I see it in you. So now what are you gonna do with it? Let's all get out of go get chase mode and use this opportunity to give and to receive and to be the abundant beings that we truly are. Okay, that is your deep thought, your assignment, your heart focus. And I really want you to sit with that and put some time, invest some time in that, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to close out our live recording here. So for everybody watching here later to record a time, thank you for being with us. Feel free to email or reach out with any comments you may have. And for all of you that are on live, just give me a moment to pause the video and I, we will dive into any questions and feedback that you guys have.